Hey everybody, welcome to Board Game Heaven. In this episode, I'm going to do an unboxing of Cthulhu Death May Die by Rob Davio and Eric Lang, published by Cool Mini or Not. It's a big box and it's about the Lovecraftian mythos, so let's quickly open it up. Alright, so Cthulhu Death May Die by Rob Davio and Eric M. Lang. Simon and Guillotine Games. And the front of the box has a giant Cthulhu on it, of course. And it's a pretty tall box as well. And on the back, here are the contents, the game all set up, the contents listed here, the components, and a bit of a backstory. So uh, it's uh, for ages 14 and up, 1 to 5 players, and plays in about 90 to 120 minutes. Let's open up the box. Okay, so first of all, we find the character boards here. They are shrink-wrapped, so let me just quickly open that up. Alright, so first of all, here's Adam. So on the front of these uh, player boards, you have all kinds of things that you can track. Uh, here your health and uh, these um, uh, things you can do, your skills. And uh, the things you can do on your turn are listed here. Uh, health here as well, and your energy or whatever it's called. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, all clearly stated on here and on the back. You have the artwork again and a little bit of a backstory. So that's pretty cool. And here is Rasputin. Unkillable. <laughs> So, and here is the full art. There's Elizabeth. Fatima. From Egypt. Ahmed. From Turkey. Wearing a fez. Borden from Massachusetts, Ian, a war veteran from Maine, the kid, just called the kid and apparently uh, she's pyrokinetic, <laughs> it's pretty creepy. And she just laughs a lot. <laughs> Gleeful cackle. Mm -hmm. Right. Here's Morgan. Kind of like an Indiana Jones person. Explorer from Indiana. <laughs> and Sister Beth. A nun with a gun. And a knife. From Colombia. <laughs> Alright, so those are the characters in Cthulhu Death Me Die. And then we find the rule book, which isn't too big, fortunately, so that means the rules are easy to learn. And we have the components listed here first with a table of contents, an overview of the game that you play with uh, using episodes and uh, setups for each episode. There is the Elder Gods that you battle. You have a storyboard, discovery cards, mythos cards, enemies. So how the investigators work, how the tiles and spaces work, the setup, dice and checks, and then the turn sequence. It's all illustrated clearly with lots of pictures, which always helps, I think. And uh, yeah, so everything's in here. It's about 20 pages with a rules summary on the back which is always handy. So there we have this board where the, uh, the Elder God will be and it will advance towards the end. And we can put cards here as well. So that's pretty cool. Nice uh, board with uh, the cool artwork that is also on the box on the back. 
Alrighty, then we have these punch boards with all kinds of tiles and tokens, so let's uh, open that up. Alright, so the first tile here has these two rooms. So uh, it looks like uh, an astronomer's uh, building, astronomy building with a telescope here in the dome. And the constellations here on the floor, that's pretty cool. We have uh, plenty of tokens there. And we have some more rooms here as well. And those are double-sided. On the back we have these crypts. It looks like the, the underground catacombs of Paris with all the skulls and everything. It's pretty cool. There's a, uh, a room with, uh, with uh, skeletons of strange creatures. Pretty cool. And the back of these rooms have different rooms as well. So that's the first tile here, uh, punch board, and here's the second one with more of these tiles. And uh, yeah, they kind of remind me of Mansions of Madness, because it's always, uh, it's also set in the same setting, of course, you know, the 20s, more or less, and um, with inside and outside uh, uh, locations, interiors and exteriors. So that's pretty cool. And there's some of these tokens on top here with, uh, well, skills. And on the back, again, different uh, locations. Really cool, and like the artwork. Really creepy and gloomy. And here is the third punch board with lots of these heart tokens. Uh, some more of these skill tokens and more rooms or corridors. Here's a staircase. And, uh, yeah, really liking the look of those. And also double-sided. So, there you go. That's the third tile. Third punch board. <laughs> and here is the fourth and last one with a large tile there with a big, big building. It looks pretty nice. And uh, some smaller rooms here as well. And this uh, dusty looking area, cobwebs and, and these bottles or whatever they are. And on the back we have what seems to be a lighthouse. That's pretty nice. And a boat. So that makes sense. And some more different rooms there. So it looks like we got plenty of interesting locations to visit in this game. That's pretty nice. And then we have uh, six episodes in boxes here. We got miniatures and the two bosses that come with the core game. So these episodes, uh, they come packed in these, so you only open the ones you want to play. And these contain basically cards. So you can see what they have. So some extra tokens are there, mythos cards, episode cards, monster cards, and discovery cards, which I will not spoil for you. So uh, that's uh, the first season, uh, Blasphemous Alchemy. The second season is called Tomes of Madness. And they're descending into the sewers there. Again, with uh, tokens, cards, etc. So you encounter something different every time you play Danse Macabre. And on the back again, the things you get. That's nice. And then there is this uh, scenario which takes place in a museum. Eldritch Idols. There we go. More tokens and tiles and monster cards. A Cursed Tide, episode 5. At the dock, so that's probably where the lighthouse in the boat's gonna be. Yep. And that's pretty nice. I like the fact that they're all packed separately, so you know you don't get to see everything that's in the game at once. So uh, that's nice. You, you advance through the story and you never know what's what's next. Unspeakable Hour. Okay, so those are the uh, six episodes in the core box. 
Uh, let's take a look at these minis. And they are wrapped together with this uh, piece of cardboard. So I'll just slide that off. And I'll put these here. And we'll look at these individually, if I can. Unless they are taped, but I don't think so. Uh, they are, actually. <laughs> Let me just get rid of that tape here first. All right. So on top of the first tray is a pack of cards. Patient medical files. I don't know what's on them, so I'll just uh, leave them for now. Then in the first tray, which has a nice uh, transparent lid to keep all the minis in place, we got the investigators, which we just saw, and we got their base clips, so in uh, six different colors. Uh, there's actually five in here. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there's five in here. So, yeah, oh yeah, a maximum number of players was indeed five. That's correct. So, five. And then we got uh, the dice. So, we have engraved dice, green ones and black ones, with different icons on them. All right. That goes in here. So, let's take a closer look at those minis. And here is the Turkish person with the uh, Fez, Ahmed. And they're all cast in a light brown, kind of beige uh, color, uh, plastic. And it's a hard plastic. It's uh, very tough, so it's not bendy at all. And it looks like the detail is pretty good, I have to say. If I look at this character's face, for example, I can make out a lot of detail and the folds and the clothing and everything. So yeah, looks very good. So that's uh, nice quality miniatures. Here's the, the Explorer from Indiana <laughs> with a whip and a gun, the hat. So yep, that's him. Now we have the veteran officer so there we go in his uniform. Nice. And we have the girl with the flame. So, yep. Yeah. And here is the nun with the gun. So she's wearing glasses, holding a knife as well. Cool. And here's a lady with a gun and a nice 20s hat. I really like the, the whole 20s style, the whole um, setting that this game is in. And the minis and the artwork, of course, portray that very well. They, they, it comes across nicely. Here is the man with the hunting gun. With a little bow tie. And again, nicely detailed. And lots of detail in the face. So that's good. Then we have Rasputin here who is also casting something, flames in his hand. So yeah, that's Rasputin. Here's the girl with the axe. And wearing glasses as well. That's cool. And here is the um, fortune teller. Uh, Fatima, I believe, holding some cards as well. This is one of the most detailed figures because of the robes and the folds and all the, the stuff. The Multi-layered uh, um, skirt. That's cool. So yeah, they're, you know, they're not super dynamically posed and they're not like 
there's not a whole lot going on, but I like that. It's like, you know, they're just, well, I would say regular people, but they're obviously not. They're, they have something about them. They're investigators. And, um, yeah, I kind of like it. I really like that. So uh, that's the, um, the investigators. And then in the second tray, and they stack on top of each other really nicely, we have these cool looking colored trackers. So you have these in five colors as well. So each player takes a set of these. And we have these cool little details, tentacle markers. I really like that. You can put them on your character board and keep track of things. So every player has a set of those. And that looks actually really colorful and, and, and joyful. <laughs> really nice tentacle madness. All right. So then we have some of these monsters. And uh, I apologize for not knowing their names yet because that's in those, in those boxes. And, uh, you know, I'd have to open them, but I won't. So um, I'll, I'll open them when I get there. But yeah, yeah, they're all eldritch horrors, all, all of these strange monsters from Lovecraftian lore. And yeah, I have to say, looking at this, there's a lot of detail. As you can see, the skin of this monster is uh, has lots of veins or muscles and lots of tiny little um, tendons under the skin. Kind of, you know, you can... You can make out all the tiny little lines there. And of course the, the leathery wings and all the tiny holes everywhere. And yeah, that looks really, really great. Very, very nice detail. I'm quite impressed with the quality of the detail of these miniatures so far. And obviously these monsters have a lot more going on than the investigators. You know, with all the tentacles and the claws and the spikes and the leathery skin and whatnot. So uh, there's a lot to look at here and I'm, I'm very pleased that the detail comes out so well. You have some very tiny little appendages here and there, so you do need to be careful since this is not a flexible kind of plastic. Um, you don't want to break it. So... Um, yeah, you need to be careful with these, but fortunately they do fit very nicely and securely into these trays that were designed for them. So that's quite good. It's well done. Then there is this um, piece of paper on it so you know which uh, character goes where. For the monsters that's obvious and for the um, adventurers, the investigators, that's uh, explained here in case you can't figure it out anymore and these are also printed here so that's also very handy i like that and then we have these so we got cultists there's 10 of them in two different sculpts so the first sculpt here in a kind of like a faded red plastic but still a uh, really nice detail you can tell by the the logo the thing that's uh, on his um on his clothes so uh, yeah and you know there's still uh, an impression of a face behind the hood and uh, there's plenty of, of detail in the folds of the cloth and the hands as well so that's that's pretty cool that's a nice model and here is another cultist and same story here there's a uh, nice detail on the things he's wearing and on the face and the hood and he's got a book and the back of the book is even nicely detailed as you can see yeah so those are nice and then we have these um, look like deep ones Fishmen. Really liking the detail on the face there. Really scary looking fish creatures. Nice. Lots of details. Lots of folds in their skin and stuff going on. That's cool. 
And the second sculpt is this one. This is a different kind of creature, like a ghoul or something. Yeah, so uh, you can see that uh, there's a lot of stuff going on on the skin there. Plenty of detail. Like it. That's a cool looking monster. All right, so we have those. So we got those, and then I'll open these. There's another set of trays here. I'll remove the tape again. Okay, so there we go. In the first tray, we have these two very large uh, monsters. So we have this guy, <laughs> which uh, beats me if I know what that is. <laughs> Might be actually print on the back of the box, but uh, it's got long tails or tentacles with uh, all these, well, vertebrae, kind of looks like that. It's got three of those wrapping around its body, coming to the front, and all these tiny little uh, clawed tentacles there. It's really, really freaky. So yeah, that's pretty nice. I mean, the, the amount of detail is, is insane. There has been a lot of sculpting done to make this. I'm, I'm quite impressed. And then we have this one. Oh boy. <laughs> Lots of creepy little suction cups, mouths, whatever they are there, and then the, the main body has all these eyes everywhere, someone stalks, and then these, these tentacles. Yeah. <laughs> this is pretty awesome. So that's two of these big monsters. There we go, they go in the top tray. And in the bottom tray we have two of these, what were they, star vampires or something? And they have fire coming out of several of these uh, protrusions from what I assume is their mouth. Because <laughs> it looks kind of like some kind of worm with uh, three tails there and lots of little uh, legs. And uh, plenty of detail on the, uh, on the skin on the back everywhere. And then the head here which has uh, these, uh, well, jaws, I think, opening up with uh, these flabby bits of flesh between them. That looks amazing. And there's two of those in the second tray there, which leaves us with Cthulhu and Haster. So let's start with Haster here. Okay. So inside that box is a couple of cards for the Haster Disciples and probably some more Mythos cards. I'll just leave that inside the shrink for now. Here, uh, Minions of Haster, the King in Yellow, and stages of when he advances and what happens when you fight him. So then there's uh, another uh, board of tokens here. Uh, small punch board. Just like in the other episodes, there's uh, little punch boards in there as well. And this one also comes with miniatures. So let's take a look at that. There's also tape, so let me remove that. So, and as you can see, this um, plastic cover has this indentation here that presumably will hold these tokens, so that's pretty handy. And then the cards simply go on top here, and these cards will fit here as well. So you can always put that back nicely into this tray. So we take off the lid, and then we got all the minis here. So we have four of these followers, these, these cultists of Haster, uh, carrying a Tommy gun. And they're also wearing some kind of uh, eye mask. And a necklace of sorts, perhaps with the yellow sign, wearing their cultist robes. So those are cool. There's four of those in here. 
And then there's Haster himself. And Haster is betray uh, portrayed here as uh, a humanoid silhouette with his hands over there, and his face hidden uh, beneath these cowls. Uh, but of course, he is not human at all. He is some kind of monster. So, uh, from under his robes comes this writhing mass of tentacles and mouths and whatnot. So, uh, yeah. There's plenty of tentacles there. <laughs> plenty of teeth as well. So a big creepy mass of slithering things uh, wearing this uh, cloak. So that's pretty cool. That's uh, Haster. And he's pretty large. So let's take a look at Cthulhu as well. All right, so inside his box is a similar plastic tray. I've already removed the um, tape that keeps it securely together. And on the top uh, is again a pack of cards with star spawn and uh, mythos cards to uh, use when you're fighting Cthulhu. Then here are those cards, the boss cards, stage one Cthulhu and the minions of Cthulhu. All right. And then here as well, a punch board with uh, nine of these tokens, double-sided. And you can punch them out and put them in here into the lid that also holds the bigger cards. And then we have two figures in here. So this, uh, I think, is then the star spawn, like a tiny Cthulhu. So uh, it's a hulking mass with lots of creepy things going on, uh, like this huge spine and these spikes on his hips and the big feet and lots of eyes on his face and tentacles that kind of look like hair <laughs> going back, these two tiny wings. Lots of tentacles coming out of his mouth and his body. Two really large muscular arms. So yeah, this is uh, quite a frightful figure. And also, again, lots and lots and lots of detail. Very cool. This is really something. I think from all the... Simon games that I've seen so far. This has to be one of the most impressive ones when it comes to detail. Um, even compared to uh, Invader, which I really liked as well. That was certainly on par, but this, wow, this, this, is, this is amazing. So, Cthulhu, obviously. And um, the big guy himself also has lots of these holes on his skin, these pox or whatever they are. Uh, small wings and uh, his squid-like head with all the tentacles going on there. So uh, yeah, that's pretty impressive. Really nice looking figure. Big and impressive. And to give you an idea of scale, here he is next to a cultist. So uh, yeah, he's a rather large. <laughs> Small for Cthulhu. I mean, you know, you know, there's the huge statue like Cthulhu that's more like his actual to scale size. But, uh, you know, for the game, this is pretty awesome. So, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty cool. There we go Cthulhu and Haster. And that is everything that comes in the core box of Cthulhu Death May Die. And so that was my unboxing of Cthulhu Death May Die by Cool Mini or Not. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to get a notification whenever I upload a new video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Board Game Heaven.